Brittany Griner breaking her silence, speaking out for the first time since returning home after being freed from a Russian prison. Griner posted on Instagram saying it feels good to be home and expressing her gratitude to everyone who helped bring her back to the U.S. She also says she plans to play in the WNBA this season. White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks joins me live now for more. So Mary Alice, Griner says that she wants to use her platform to help bring other detained Americans home. What's the latest? Yeah, Alexis, this is quite some post. You can see the smile there on her face. Clearly, she posted out of gratitude. So much of what she wrote there was about saying thanks to everyone, from her teammates to the WNBA, to members of this White House and the Biden administration, the Richardson Center that works on getting hostages home. But you're right, that part of her statement stuck out to me, too. She wrote, President Biden, you brought me home, and I know you are committed to bringing Paul Whelan and all Americans home. I will use my platform to do whatever I can to help. And I encourage everyone who played a part in bringing me home to continue their efforts until all Americans are home. So clearly she is feeling the love. She is feeling uh, on the road to recovery, but wanting to use, like she said, her platform to help other Americans and other families still struggling. It was pretty a pretty lengthy post uh, all in all. And I was surprised to see that she is going to be playing in, in the WNBA. I'm sure lots of her fans are, are happy to hear about that. Absolutely. That had been a big question. Of course, everyone here at the White House, the administration had said that her recovery and her timeline is up to her. Her coach had said the same, that, that they were waiting to see what Brittany wanted to do. So here she is sort of making it official. I'm sure fans will be very pleased. The idea of seeing her back out on the court, doing what she loves, doing what she is so good at. It is exciting. It kind of gives me chills just thinking about seeing her back out there soon. I think they're going to get some new fans too, just probably yeah. che checking it out when she comes back. want to yeah. ask you about President Biden, he's got a busy day. I know he's set to meet with veterans in Delaware. Uh, he's expected to urge vets to take advantage of health care provided under the PACT Act. That's the bill to help veterans uh, who have been exposed to toxic burn pits on military bases overseas. And I know that this is a personal issue for the president, uh, who says it may have actually contributed to his son Bo's death. So what can we expect from him today? And, and how much of an impact is this program actually having? Yeah, you're exactly right. This is a really personal issue to President Biden. He has long said that he believes he's worried that his son's exposure to toxic burn pits while serving in Iraq could have played a role in him developing cancer. And so this legislation that was passed earlier this year that really expands benefits for veterans uh, is really important to this president. This event that he's doing today up in Delaware is one of dozens of events around the country where leaders, local leaders, are encouraging veterans to apply and start to get some of these benefits. Benefits. And they already are. We know, um, according to the administration, that over 185,000 veterans have started to apply for some of these benefits, filing claims, especially if they are currently facing terminal illnesses. And we know that uh, almost a million, 730,000 veterans have received toxic exposure screenings, trying to identify any illnesses early. Uh, this is a big deal for this president to be able to sign this bill into law. And now he wants veterans to be taking advantage of it. And gl glad to see that so many are. And the president's also expected to sign a major military spending act soon after the Senate passed it in an overwhelmingly bipartisan vote overnight. I know it provides increased aid to allies like Ukraine and Taiwan. It also does away with the COVID vaccine requirement for service members. How significant is that? And, and what else can you tell us is in this bill? Yeah, I think it's really significant. The White House is against this. They have said specifically that the president believes repealing that mandate is a mistake. They have always viewed the COVID uh, vaccine mandate as a part of readiness, making sure that troops don't get sick, that they're not uh, exposing one another to COVID. Uh, so it was a big deal that in this legislation that was passed um, or that's about to be sort of finished and had, we expect to be headed to the president's desk, uh, that that mandate was repealed. The White House is basically indicating, though, that the president is still going to sign it, even though he does not like that part of it. Uh, we heard today from the White House, they said that, that he just believes it's too important to fund our military, uh, that that is of prime importance. He doesn't want to get in the way of something here, especially at the end of the year. And there are a few other big things in this bill. It includes pretty significant pay raises and housing um, allowance uh, raises and increases to service men and women. Some of the biggest increases we've seen in over a decade. And like you said, a lot of funding, too, for Taiwan and Ukraine. All right, a lot of that could be because of high inflation as well. Mary Alice Parks at the White House, thank you.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.